Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one I'm going to talk about the most important early wards that you can use that any role can use basically to track the enemy jungler. And why did I say any role? Because a lot of the best wards that can be placed at various stages in the first few minutes are best used by laners as well as junglers. Lately on the gameplay channel we've been seeing mid laners who have prior, specifically level 2 prior, slap that ward over the raptor pit around 2 minutes. This ward along with many others gives you so much information early that allows you to see the enemy jungler's intentions, to protect yourself from invades and of course to allow you to counter gank junglers when they go for those laner ganks. Hopefully this will show you the power of early game wards as well as how to track enemy junglers and predict where they're going to be in not only one move but maybe three, four, five, ten moves. And remember if you want all the best information in game provided to you in one easy overlay, Mobilytics has you covered. The live companion is designed to help you before, during and after each game. Once you get into the loading screen you get to see the fellow teammates that will ride with you on this portion of your journey while also allow you to import runes and builds for the statistical edge. Don't waste your time in the loading screen as the app will give you advice based on your team compositions to maximize your advantages, only to be followed up by receiving useful, and that's the keyword, insights while you're playing, including ultimate spikes, item completions, and more. You can also track the gold performance so that you know which enemy to completely destroy. And now it also has jungle timers for those of you who do not press tab like LS. Post game shows you the MVP, useful stats and summaries of what you have accomplished. So in order to directly support the channel as well as to have the most complete way to learn, improve and climb, download the Mobilytics companion app with the link below. Right now let's pretense this entire whole vision discussion by the concept of do you have to necessarily go back to swap out your trinket, you know get the red scanner, why even do you simply ward and pixel bushes at level 1, you want that peace of mind based upon the first movement. You want to be protected in the inevitability of something happening that might compromise your game plan. Also, you know, getting that knowledge sooner, seeing what the enemy jungler is doing before they see you, is basically just winning. Because first, the decision making in the jungle is the best way to gain tempo control. And remember, being proactive is better than being reactive. Yes, reactive pathing and counter ganking is solid, but if you are making deliberate moves at every stage of the game, it's very unlikely a jungler is going to be able to react and counterplay that at every single turn. Now, the three best new wards that we're going to talk about will come up next. I just want to highlight the ones that everyone knows and the pros and cons about their applications. Obviously, we have the pixel wall bush. We slap it in at one minute. We go back to base. The thing is, this lasts for 90 seconds. So you place that down at one minute, you know, two minutes, 30, it's finished. Very rarely will you get great example and great value from this unless you are a against an invading non-scaling jungler like such as your Volibears, Warwicks and Viegos, which to be honest is just rare. All it simply does is protect you basically against level 2 ganks from a Javan or a Shinshao, and in case you want to finish your quadrant it might protect you from someone you know doing a red buff into that side to collapse on you. However as we saw in the invading video about Nidalee, it can be hugely beneficial against her and Graves as well to put a ward in the middle of the river because they can simply map scale over the pit, herald the dragon and walk into your side of the map. The top lane and not the jungler placed this ward against the Nidalee who went from red buff straight to a blue over the wall through the herald pit but because everyone saw it, the enemy jungler, the Camille, the mid laner, we could have a skirmish and collapse. If you don't place that ward like this nocturne you might have a graves do his red do the same thing, invade and wait to cheese you on your grump. Now this is an example of a bad invade, I thought I should show you that as well. He misses the smite, everyone rotates, he dies, it's not really the best example of, you know, a good invade, but it does show you how a good ward in the middle of the river against these champions can provide you huge value. And the first of these new warding placements are going to pretense by an example we already know, the deep red buff ward, or simply stopping one on their raptor bit. The thing is not all your problems are solved simply by warding their buff, it really doesn't always give you the most information. In this example we have an Elise versus Viego, what happens the Elise simply runs out of base, puts a ward on the red buff and goes back and gets her scanner. Is this a good ward? Well it really entirely depends on the matchup component, she's against a Viego, so what clear is Viego most likely going to do? A 5 camp. You don't really expect him to go leashless, he can but that red buff ward is only really going to tell you where the enemy jungler begins and most of the time if they get a leash you get that information anyway. You see that example here, the Viego gets leashed by the bottom lane, they're late to show, you kind of know he started there and you get literally no value out of that red buff ward. Now this is actually a very interesting game and one of the core new wards I want laners and junglers to pay attention to so we'll come back to this in a few minutes but this ward by the Nidalee shows significantly more value because she waits to late invade, uses her spear to probe in case she's getting trapped, places it at one minute. The only reason this ward in particular is good is because she's against a Jarvan. If you're against a Warwick, a Jarvan and so on, they will be by that red at around 2.30. Well, before 2.30, which means you're just gonna see them reach that red buff and now you actually have all the information in the world, even if you know where they're leashed, 
you know where they are at 2.30 and that's bigger than knowing where they began. And that's the whole point of this video. Tracking them where they start, that's one thing. Tracking where they're going to be a little later provides so much more value in terms of their second camp sequencing, their first and second gangs, which crab they want to secure. So we just talked about the pros and cons of leaving that level 1 deep red buff ward, but what if that slice of pizza isn't enough and you want deep dish? And you know, that's plenty of information. That deep level 1 red buff ward, the deep level 1 raptor pit ward, if you're against a fiddle, a cane, it doesn't matter who, you get a ton of value from these clears. The problem is, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a 5 camp slash 6 camp meta. Yes, we have our gankers who are enjoying that three camps but if you know where they began from a leash and maybe someone else on your team places a ward on that side then we are going to need our help from our laners and laners i hope you've been watching so far paying attention to these wards because guess what it protects you from ganks and it allows you to you know rotate with your jungler play your lane better it's fundamental laners and junglers work together and on that end a ward at the raptor pit whether in the bush or in front of the raptor camp itself at around 1 minute 21 will give you so much more information than simply knowing where they began and the reason this is ultimately so valuable is because it tells you what CS they've done, what clear they're doing, where they're going to be next, and it gives you information about their second rotation as well. And if you are not going to have prior at 2 minutes where it's kind of better to place, you get the same sort of value, then placing it around that 1 minute 21 marker will give you so much information about the jungler's clear. In this situation, the rumble gets leashed on the bottom side, the leash starts on his red side, you know exactly what the rumble is going to do. However, what if the rumble decides to, you know, do a blue side and go down? What if you weren't exactly against a rumble? maybe at least in solo starting and you have no idea where he began a ward place at 1 minute 21 will last for 90 seconds that covers your 3 minute 15 5 camp for clear timer so if your jungler wants to perhaps invade and steal their red buff he can see that approach and get out in time if you simply want to protect yourself from a rek'sai 3 camp gank then you will see her on the raptors your jungler can play accordingly you as the laner can hug the other side of the lane you are protected if you place it at, you know, 1 minute 21 or 2 minutes if you have that level 2 prior, it also tells you if the enemy jungler is doing a 5 camp or a 6 camp. You might know the Dino got leashed on the red buff. Is she doing a 6 camp including the Krugs or is she doing a 5 camp into the blue side ignoring the Krugs? You would know this with this ward. This has effects on the second rotation which we'll get into in a second. In our example here, the Leeson sees the Rumble show up on the Raptor pit and knows all of a sudden, hold up. I did my Krugs and I'm way slower clearing than the Rumble. That means if he finishes his red and does his 5 camp, he has prior to invade me. If the enemy top laner has prior, which he does, then all of a sudden I'm going to get invaded 2v1. It's going to be messy. And while PSG fans shout in celebration with their hands in the air and Barcelona fans cry with depression, the Leeson goes straight to his blue buff into his Grump to avoid potentially losing those camps via a late invade. His LeBlanc had prior, she rotates, they win the fight, celebrations. Yeah, but for Caillou, that's nonsense. I mean, what if Canyon? Okay, what if Canyon? Yeah, okay, sure. Let me give you an example. What if they didn't do this ward and Canyon got shut down because of it? I have just the footage you're looking for. Gragas, red side clear. Canyon, Jarvan. Trindamir mid, wards the blue buff. I don't know why. Again, that value from the Trindamir's ward is better spent using it on the Raptor pit. Trindamir spins to win, uses his RNG's blessing to force the Graves to go back. He has flash TP, the Trindamir has ghost ignite. Now we know very well that the Gragas started red buff, but what if the Gragas did red Raptors? And now he's right in the mid lane and he kills you. And Graves, you know, doesn't have to back because he gets in front of shoves of waves, has TP and now you're screwed. Okay, fine. What if that doesn't happen, but you know, you still force the Graves to back. Simply slap that trinket ward over the wall. I'm sure Challenger and Korea can handle the multitasking of trying his best to push the wave and doing that. All you'd see is the Raptor camp still available. You wouldn't exactly know where the Gragas is, but what happens is the Gragas would show on that ward round about now, and Canyon, instead of saying, well, you know, where is the Gragas? Is he top side? Is he bottom side? Would know exactly that the Gragas is on the Raptor camp, the Gragas moved into the river, and the Gragas was going to gank bottom lane. It would give information to the bottom lane to avoid the gank. It would give information to Canyon to know he might be invaded. And it would change the entire nature of how Canyon would play the matchup. He just simply did not have information. The bottom lane did not have information. But if the Trinity had slapped the ward over the Raptor pit, we'd have the information. You're still not sold? Okay, what if a top laner places the ward against a Fiddlesticks? Oh, hello there, Fiddle. I know you're going to do red Raptor's Krugs into blue side. I'm Kindred. I'm going to do my red side and then invade you. And if I have prior, you are doomed. Try and imagine that in a sort of grievous voice. If the fiddlestick started on the bottom side, you would see the fiddlestick do his blue side and run across that very ward into the raptor and red pit and Kindred could do the same action just on the other side of the map. So when you're going for your level 1 wards, either at the red buff or the raptor pit, think about it as a mid laner. How can I assist in placing great wards between 121 and 2 minutes that give us so much tracking information that it opens up the entire game? Now as I mentioned, this gives you a lot of information about an enemy jungle's clear pathing in terms of how they want to see 
For example, if they do a full six camp, you see this on the Raptor Pit Ward, and they perhaps go for the top crab, you're probably thinking to the opposite side, maybe they gank top lane. All of a sudden, you'll know exactly where they want to go for the Krugs or the Raptors at their second spawn. If they did a five camp red Raptors blue side, you know at 420 the Raptors are going to spawn. And if they did the Krugs second, you know at 420 they're going to get stoned. Obviously, that's a circa. By that, I mean it depends on the champion what exact spawn timer that has, you know, how fast they clear it initially. And now I hear the bottom laners and top laners thinking they're exempt from this responsibility. No. If your mid laner, top laner, or jungler could not get this early vision, either level one happened, maybe there was just a wall of defense. You as the support or the top laner, if you have prior, can use a ward at any point after 2 minute 45, preferably a little later, and slap it on the Krug camp just to get vision of the area. You can get all the information in the world from this simple ward. Is the Krug camp level one and the enemy jungler show top lane with 20 CS? Okay, they did a five camp. Is it level five and they started on the top side? Okay, they did a six camp and finished with the Krugs. Did they start on the red side, do a weird clear where the CS was messed up, but the Krug camp is level four? Well, they did it second. It also has the added benefit of, you know, showing the jungler when they go for a second rotation clear and want to gank you in the side lane. You can see them coming and you can react or you can die, your decision, preferably you don't die. But that ward there placed by roaming supports, top laners, anyone who decides to do an invade is so supremely valuable in solo queue as well as organized play. And as a jungler, what you do with this information is up to you. I'm simply providing you the ways that laners and you can place deep wards either through invades, level 1 starts, tracking mechanics, how you position according to the information you get in the game. Well, I can only advise the rest of this channel and the gameplay channel to give you those decision making choices. And now that bonus ward I mentioned that the Anivia placed in that Viego vs Elise example. Well, you know Elise is a level 3 ganger, don't you? Well, everyone except top lane apparently knows this. So instead of being very risky by placing a ward at the Raptor Pit, why don't you just slap it in the top pixel brush at around that 1 minute 25, 1 minute 21 mark? If Elise decides to do a blue side gank into the mid lane, you see her. If Elise decides to do a blue gromp into a red invade on your jungler, you see her. And if Elise does the classical buff buff gromp into the river, she has to scan, you see her. And that value was significantly higher than the value that they at least got at that level 1 ward. Why? Because Viego can very plainly see 12 CS, blue buff, red buff, walking into the river. I know exactly where she's going to go next. So you as Viego can finish your 5 camp, or you can simply decide to call it on your 4 camp and set up a counter gank. And you can see the action unfold. And that's exactly the power of these 1 minute 21 wards by mid laners and these 2 minute 30 wards by top laners and supports by the Krug bushes. I mean, the Elise should have expected the Viego to be topside, except because he had that information, he decided to cut his clear at a 4 camp, do the top crab, and now you know fully well that Elise is simply going to go to the bottom crab. She has no other decision. But because that happens so quickly, the tier 2 grump that the Viego took is not going to have spawned yet. That means bottom laners who are paying attention and watching this video as well will say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know Elise is coming bottom side for that crab. My jungler's still top side counter jungling, diving, what have you. We can play respectfully and we can back off. We can go back to base. We can also simply place a control ward and protect ourselves from Elise dives that are quite vicious. And in the meantime, the Viego can be very relaxed about counter jungling, gank, finishing his red side, resetting, and know full well the Elise is screwed. And Elise will have to fall back to her Raptors and Krugs, which is hysterical to do early. She can't gank, those are the only camps on the map. The Viego can bide his time, even if he gets wards in his jungle by the enemy laner, he can still gank it. Elise is forced to go topside again, he can counter gank that once more. He has tempo control, he is in the driver's seat, all because of Anivia's very good ward in the pixel bush right before the buff spawn. So there you have it, consider your deep vision at around 1 minute 21 to 2 minutes. Top laner, side laner is 2 minutes 30 please. Junglers, know where you want to place it early against the invades. Know where you want to place it early if you want to gank or counter gank or prevent level 2s. I have a full vision guide that still holds true this day. I will link that below. That will discuss examples and vision control and fog of war tricks that everyone really needs to know. Please, mid laners and supports as well as junglers continually keep placing those raptor pit wards even at, you know, 3 minutes, 4 minutes. It can simply tell you where a jungler's been, where they're going, what their objective focus is. It just gives us so much raw information. And as junglers, my entire channel is about how we use that information to harness the raw power of 1v5 carry potential. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share, and comment if you did enjoy and learn something. Please remember to have a look at my volleyball and jungling guide with Zada.gg below. Really is a great piece of work, and I hope any of you who decide to use it really greatly enjoyed and learn a lot. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.